Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was, there was just some laugh. Some laugh. <laughs> well, no promising all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. I was probably one of the first people to meet you on the circuit, I think, because me and you obviously done You're a show. on the mainland, you're welcoming yeah. her off the boat. I do, there, there is part <laughs> of me that sort of feels like I introduced you to, like, uh, human beings on Earth. Like, if some... I think there's a very endearing quality in you, Marilyn, but you sometimes feel like an alien who's landed in a different planet and you're <laughs> discovering things for the first time. It's a very naive, endearing nature you've got about you. Cause like, Are you thinking of yourself like Bruce Willis? And I'm like, what's her name? Lilo. And I'm like, do you know, you know that like that trope Bruce Willis film? Bruce Willis Stitch and Lilo and Lilo. You know that trope I thought you were films about when it's like, for a like a woman just pops out of nowhere and has like no knowledge of the world. And you're like, <laughs> I'll be the best sex you've ever had. Wait, no. I was thinking more on Breaking Amish Fifth or element. something. You know, like Breaking like Amish. A, like like a, a fish out of water. Fish out of thing. water, aye. Yeah. Like, like Elf. Like Elf. Elf. Yeah, basically. Your life is like Elf, except instead of moving to the North Pole to New York, you moved to Shetland to Edinburgh or whatever. Probably the same north to south difference. Because <laughs> <laughs> you studied in Edinburgh and stuff like that, didn't you? But yeah, I'd lived away from home before. Mm-hmm. But how much of your culture shock is it coming from Shetland to like, I think mainland? On, is what you mean your like, sort of jokes on stage and stuff? You kind of. No, I mean off stage, that. just in your normal life. <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to say is, I'll say, it, you're one of the maddest people I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that with love. <laughs> Um, yeah, Scotland's like a different country to Shetland. Aye. It was. And then when I'd get nervous, I'd go to these Shetland and shops and people wouldn't understand me and didn't help. But it's like, it's so different. It's so different. Also, where I live in Shetland, there's like four houses. Yeah. For like miles. Wow. So it's like, it's wild. That so you didn't have like next door neighbours? Well, you did, but... Like you had to walk across away. some fields away. <laughs> <laughs> but you knew them really well and you could just walk into that house and... Spend time there. And See, your cousin I met last week, was she actually your cousin? Yeah. 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 And so I was her pissed, brother I can't remember, is genuine... There was a lot of chat about stuff like this. Where... But she's like my fifth cousin twice, once or twice removed. Right, so okay. it, within marrying territory for me, if it's under the hand, <laughs> over the hand, it's okay. <laughs> what does it mean when it's like once removed? I can, I'm really good at this. Right. So um, your first cousin is your like auntie's bairn. Yep. Because you're both on the same level. Yeah. But if your first cousin has a baby, that baby's your first cousin once, once removed. removed. Oh. Yeah. So that was twice removed yeah. for you. So then so if that's... you have a baby, they're second cousins. Oh. So that's it like goes down in tears. I thought You've got to know cousin... this when you live in Shetland. <laughs> <laughs> I thought second cousin was like your cousin's cousin. What's what's that? You know how like your cousin has a cousin but not on your side? No, your second cousin. No, that's my Your cousin's book. cousin's not just your cousin. No, like on the their so like their so, Bad side. Uh, right, you know? so you mean if know. your auntie's husband had a nephew yeah. that's not blood related to your auntie, uh-huh. that's not your cousin. What, what is that? That's just a person. Do you know how I feel right now? Is that you know all those memes like <laughs> girls post me like me when I'm being read the rules of like a card game or something like that, and it's just yeah. like a, someone's streaming with tears. Like I just can't even hear this. <laughs> no, it's just white noise. Do you know what I hate though? Like, see when. Let's say my ma's cousin, right? I would say that's my auntie, but apparently that's a second cousin or something like that. Oh your... God, I don't know how it moves when you go up the ladder. I thought you would need to know that in because Shetland as well. Because you can still have be... a, you can still have an auntie or uncle that's younger than you. Yeah. So maybe it's you can still. Yeah. It. No, I'm just thinking. I hate the idea of that. It's wrong. Yeah. Point being, there's a lot of inbreeding in Shetland. Is what you're saying. <laughs> like, I... <laughs> we don't need to leave that. Plead, plead the fifth on that one. Yeah. <laughs> my mum's Dutch, so. But I did go back through my dad's family tree when you get like in a curve, mm-hmm. and I was looking back, looking back through, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's a brother and sister that got married." And dad's like, "No, no, no, just their bairns." <laughs> <laughs> so. So yeah. the cousins got married. Yeah, the first cousins got married a few generations ago. Uh, Aye, that's fine. That was fine. normal back then, twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah, I, is it legal here in this country to marry what? your first cousin? No. Is that why you say that know. Shetland is a different country from Scotland? Because you like to think you have got different rules when it comes to <laughs> yeah. fucking incest. Can't believe I'm getting called 12. a chukta last week and now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you just see Shetland as its own thing? Because it's, is it true it's like closer to Norway? The trains, the closest train station is like Norway rather than Scotland or whatever? I think Bergen, yeah. 
Because it, well, it's about 12 hours to Bergen by boat, 12 hours to Aberdeen. So I think actually technically we're closer to landmass to Scotland. Right. But we're closer city to How Spain. similar is Bergen to Aberdeen? I've never been to Bergen. That's crazy. I know. And one time my dream has always been to, because there's boats that come back and forward, like um, lots of yachts and just like fishing boats and that. And my dream has always been to wake up hungover accidentally on my way to Bergen. And it almost <laughs> happened. It almost <laughs> happened one time, but I had to look after that cousin and take her home. So I was like, I can't take her on a boat to Norway. <laughs> so we had to go how home how do you get back? So you say you're going back to Shetland soon. Like, how do you get back when you go back there? Uh, by train. No, no, you don't. <laughs> but because you can either fly or, or obviously I get, get the boat. I get the boat because I've got the car. So how long does the boat take? Um, it'll take 12 hours, but can take 14. Fuck it. That's crazy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But, well, no, 14, be on it. it can take like up to 20 hours if it's bad weather. All oh, right. Yeah, fuck, I've been stuck at sea for like 21, 22 hours before. Jesus Christ. Fuck that. Fuck that oh, was a trick. I watched a wee thing, I'm sure, I'm sure it was Shetland, but it was like someone trying to row it and like a lot of people just die. Yeah, you got to hope that's David Williams next time. <laughs> 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 now that he's done ever, the channel. He's done the channel heard? with David. Uh, try going to Shetland and uh, see how you go on. <laughs> have you ever heard Send a trawler out just to go and nab him. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard of anyone rowing it? No? Um, <clears throat> Is it impossible? I'm no, sure. no, it's not impossible. I think it's one of I think it's one of the roughest passages for yeah. commercial crossing because south of Shetland's a bit of sea called the Roost and the Roost is where the North Sea and North Atlantic crash into one another. Uh-huh. And it's so deep that even on a calm day when you're crossing it just goes poof and you start to feel the waves and things start falling over so don't do it basically that's I, your advice don't yeah. throw it I should, it'll be manageable yeah, no. yeah. we should try it <laughs> like Some a laugh. top gear challenge some laugh <laughs> of rowing a dinghy so when was the first time that you came to the to the mainland was it when you went to uni here or was it before that no I'd been heaps before <laughs> I'd been heaps before because mum's Dutch I'd been to the Netherlands a lot really like in the summers mm-hmm. and then um, and I'd been to Scotland for like fiddle clubs and and we used to drive to Holland so we'd drive via Scotland but I'd come down for fiddle clubs and orchestra club and visiting my sister when she was here yeah I've been I've been quite a few times before yeah. yeah yeah I know you're acting as if it's like an alien yeah. no but like, are you know it's still perplexed sometimes by it. you know and, <laughs> but you know like cause sometimes like, and you've been surprised by something that is just normal here and stuff like do you still find yourself getting surprised by shit that we have in the big cities well I was gonna say I was gonna say no but the, like I was gonna say maybe it's just me like in Shetland I'm the one is like this but the other day I stayed with my pals for Shetland and her brother-in-law and his son was coming up to see the Celtic game. Uh-huh. And when they came into the flat, every question they asked and everything they asked, I was like, oh, wait, this is what I was like. But they were like, will we get, will the restaurant surface food after it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, surely that's too late to get dinner. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, we are all like this. <laughs> and it's just like the idea of getting buses at a certain time. Because where I lived, I was like, if you miss one of the three buses a day, you don't get into town. There's a lot of stuff. Well, that, I, that's sort of stuff. I think it's just, I, it must just take a lot of getting used to if yeah. you're... Because yeah. that, like... I can't imagine what it's like living in Shetland and growing up in, in such a small community and stuff. And, like... Because we've spoke before about, obviously, when you're at school and all that stuff, like, you know everybody and you talk about, like, you know, the doctor knows the whole fucking town and that sort of stuff. Like, yeah. so what was the population? 23,000 fuck new. Right. But like, um, yeah, because I think my first class at school, there were four of us. Really? Yeah. Did you like them? Um, I I said, it's a lot riding on those friendships, really, isn't it? If it's only four of you. Right. Yeah, but then they're gr- grouped in other classes for learning as well. So you're grouped in different year groups and you're all clumped together. Like first year and my sixth year and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like, we had like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. And now I think there's just two rooms for all the years. <laughs> really? Wild. Yeah. Two rooms? So you get like a really clever P1 and some really dumb P4. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one school? Yeah. And then we moved to a slightly bigger school. and then But then by the time I went to high school, there's 200 in a year so you're like holy crap <laughs> I've never seen that many boys like <laughs> <laughs> well, you thought about that because when you'd come on a uh, debate and dating we'd spoke about the, the term that you have in, in Shetland so we, we say I, I, I guess you say us as well so just you would get off with somebody, off with somebody yeah. Yeah. but you say in Shetland bag off bag off but it's got a multiple meaning 
Yeah. Well, I think back in the olden days, it meant more like sex. Like uh-huh. you bagged off with someone, but new bag off means like pulling and like kissing as well. Right. So I was talking to the same cousin, which she just named on Mia. <laughs> and she said how she bagged off with this guy on the dance floor and her mom's like, Mia! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so bag off means that you might have like, just like kissed in the back of the pub or you might have like... Shagged them. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good like, cover all for a liar. In, in school <laughs> yeah back down for the last and then just yeah but i think getting off with someone is the same thing yeah. like in america getting off would probably be like shagging but here it's just kissing because pulled we used to also say pulled and pulled meant just a kiss well pulled's yeah. got that kind of double meaning mm. i think hasn't it you say oh, pulled last night yeah it's like you know, oh, yeah, yeah exactly and then like everything but i guess so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that a term you use in the did, did you ever say that everything but it's like did you sleep with them you're like everything but <laughs> it's like really everything everything scat <laughs> <laughs> our minds are all going there to be fair. <laughs> but i so so we'd we'd met obviously when we'd done the free french together and so marilyn you had the show on before me and you were so nice because you would always help no one done this on the free fringe, right? Because they tell you... Is this why you think I'm not from here? <laughs> <laughs> but they, t- they tell you what you're meant to do on the free fringe is everybody's meant to be mucking in together and everybody's meant to, like, stay 10 minutes uh, after the, the show, after you help with their door and before. Nobody done that, but you did do that for me every night and it was so sound to you. And did you do it for the next person? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I really he was trying to bag it. off for some last <laughs> I'm going to bag it off for day for I, right, you know? But, um, but no, it was so nice and it was, it was cool meeting you, but like you'd done all these gigs, but you, you hadn't really done a lot of the circuit yet, I guess, and you'd done, done the fringe a couple of times and stuff. Like, how d- did you start doing comedy in Shetland or how did you start? Oh, the story's a bit weird. So um, I was living in Amsterdam for a bit. Mm-hmm. And when I was there, just like a series of unfortunate things happened. From right. like being kicked out of my flat to like being fired from my job. And then I got a job at McDonald's. And then, um, but I was also doing filmmaking as like part time work. Aye. And then my house got robbed. So they took everything. So my camera, my laptop, my memory cards, my Fuck. bass, my fiddle, my iPod, my Kindle, my clays. They packed in my own suitcase. Hey, right, I'm not the fucking insurance. You don't need <laughs> <laughs> you believe you had this stuff. It was a gold watch. I remember. <laughs> it was uh, t- twenty thousand pounds in cash, I believe. <laughs> But, but you got robbed, Jesus Christ. Yeah, and I was doing improv classes every Sunday. I didn't have much money. So I was doing improv drop-in workshops on Sundays. And the comedy course felt that bad for me. They had the stand-up course, so they just signed me up to it. And you're meant to pay up front, and I wanted to do it, but I couldn't afford it, and they knew that. So they just said, look, just come along and do the stand-up course. All you need is a notepad and a pen. Uh-huh. And one of the other people in the Did they not steal that? that? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, Only body hanging left. <laughs> I didn't even have that, but someone else in the flat had it. So I was like... Oh, you stole that from them. Yeah. <laughs> so as punishment for getting robbed, you got a stand-up comedy course given to you? Yeah, so I did that, and it's amazing, because I've still got the notepad, and it's like before, because I always liked stand-up, but it's before I got really, really into it, so I'd watch in the fringe for like a week at a time, but I wasn't watching that much of it at that point, but I enjoyed what I saw, but I, on my notes it was like, watch Daniel Floss. <laughs> because <laughs> I just like learning about people and then I just got really 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 into stand up and I did the graduation show and then I moved back to Shetland and didn't gig for like a year and a half yeah so what year was that like the first time 2014 because yeah. that would have been around about the time I met you then when you'd maybe not been doing it after after that yeah. break and um, and uh, then you would just then you just done like a month at the fringe well yeah so I um, I went home to Shetland and didn't do anything for like 18 months and then I was thinking oh I was just in a kind of rut. Like, I don't remember 2015 at all, really. It's was that weird. your bad year, basically? Yeah, I just don't remember it. Just, like, just didn't do anything for a year. Do you ever have a year like that? I think lockdown. it was 2015 and all, actually. Really? Yeah, and then lockdown. In most years. Just, like, <laughs> dossing about after uni, bumming around doing stand-up, shifting yeah. the upper potato. Uh, 2015 was a weird year, what? 2016, weird if you ask me, you know. Trump and Brexit uh, <laughs> so actually when things start to go to pot no everyone I, I, I know what you mean like it's hard, sometimes you look back and you kind of go what the fuck was I even doing this year I didn't know what the fuck I was up to yeah. 
Even this year, I, I, I was going to say shit. this is going to go out into the year. Like, what have we done this year? What have we done? <laughs> this. The what good thing you? is, no, hey, hey, there's, you're 85. <laughs> there's no record of what we've done at least once a week with this podcast. <laughs> Why? Oh, that's right. I was wearing that shirt that day. Or, you know, I was actually looking through to to make sure I hadn't wore the same clothes <laughs> for every episode. I was like, I need to put on something different. So I put this on. <laughs> it's been an expensive it has. adventure. I know. That but, was um, when I stream every day in lockdown, and I go back to edit my streams, and I realise it the same outfit three yeah. in a row and be like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> but you mentioned number 85 there so we were at the list party so subject for Mark I don't want to bring it up but <sighs> yeah oh, well clearly the list don't have their finger on the pulse is all I'm going to say <laughs> wait till this. they release the shit list of cunts they hate you know, <laughs> my... <laughs> so basically uh, what's the script made it into the, the hot 100 so Steve, Steven Stewart's other podcast yeah me and yeah. Stu's one original and best Mary Elaine you made it you were top 10 what were you, eight? eight. You're the eighth right. hottest thing in Scotland. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Then I got a fever, so it's real. <laughs> it is real. But, um, yeah, no, I don't know why. That's not as great, though, because you were in, I mean, you've had a good year. You were in BBC New Comedy Award Scott final. Scott Speaker of the Year. Funny Woman final. Scott Speaker of the Year. There's not much stuff. left for you to achieve. Yeah. No, I peaked. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're on the Some Laugh podcast. I think 2023 could be a dead year for yeah, you. Yeah, I want to remember this guy. I said, it's like, start drinking now. If you forget what you've done this year and just look at all those accolades, you know, just read your <laughs> finalists, finalists. By the BBC New Comedy Awards, you were in, the, obviously, Steve famously won uh, before it became a has been. I really wanted I mean, to win it. Mean, Mark <laughs> like the first... heap for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Would I be the first woman from Scotland? Because you're the first Scottish yeah. winner, weren't you? Yeah. Well done. That's right. And you were, because I'd messaged just saying congrats, and you were like, you and Roscoe were standing outside the Pleasance listening to the final when I was in it. Yeah. And I, was like, and I didn't know who you were, but I was like, because I came to Roscoe, I was like, I hope your friend wins. <laughs> but I'm sure we knew each other by then. That was quite no. late on. 20, no. 2018, that was. That was a year after. Years, we, that was a year after me and you'd done that. No, we all know each other very recently. But I'm sure, like, maybe, yeah, we didn't know each other that well, but, like, I'm sure when you had done mm. the fringe, I'm sure we would have crossed paths and stuff, because. Was that in Cowgate Head? really hang out, though. No, just seen no. You, uh, I know. In passing. Part of the odd time at that bar, because I always remember you had that uh, denim jacket that had the big McEwen's Lager logo yeah, on the back. He's obsessed with McEwen's that. Lager. We should probably do a plug for McEwen's Lager. Please, McEwen's. To me, me I, I just associate McEwen's with like the 90s, like when they it's kind like of Rapsy Nesbitt Rangers, beer, isn't it? Rapsy yeah. Nesbitt, like <laughs> my old uncle, like, I've got an uncle and I always think him as like the personification of McEwen's Lager. Cause he's just Red like, face. Oh. What is that, a wee pirate on the front? Is that right? Aye. What is it? He's not a pirate. He's I can never remember the actual term for him. Like what kind of <laughs> thing he is? A cavalier. A cavalier, that's the one. But he looks like a pirate. He looks like lo- fucking Long John Silver or something. You he stayed at my mum's and you paid me in cans of McEwen yeah. Export, and which nice, I did appreciate. It? It's, nice. it's good. When I made because I graduated in Edinburgh in McEwen's Hall, so before I went into graduation ceremony, I slipped a can of McEwen's in my dad's different seat bloke. I, think. <laughs> I, I I've, got, I've played McEwen's Hall. Is that the same? The hall is named after the same it country. That's where they make the beer. No? It has to be. It so what, McEwen be. was a cavalier. Is that him on the front? I reckon so. Yeah, I I've never made that, that connection. That's what I've gone by. All right. my whole life. It's quite a standard name. But yeah, I slipped the can into dad's pocket when I came out, and then my little red thing with my degree in it and I got the can out of my dad's pocket and started drinking it and he was like what? He had no idea I'd slipped in his pocket and he sat the whole way to graduation with a can in his pocket. <laughs> but did you used to get drunk. McEwen's export because they would export it to Shetland? Yeah I think Shetland drinks like a huge percentage of McEwen's. <laughs> there was, there was, I wish I also knew this um, there was a fact about like there was one Christmas when Shetland drank like the biggest chunk of tenants in Scotland. <laughs> Good on you. Because we had like Christmas New York Day and then up Halia, the Viking festival. So, like, the amount of tenants they shipped to Shetland was more than any other part really? of Scotland. It's ridiculous. That's, that's like when you hear like a band's massive in Japan or something like that. <laughs> 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 Fucking big in Shetland, by the way. <laughs> you mentioned the Viking thing. Like, there's a big sort of obviously Viking, you know, historically a Viking influence in, in Shetland. And you are also like a, a fan of like the kind of myths and you talk about the, the story like you do a lot of storytelling about the myths of of Shetland and, and things like that and is that something that that you're passionate about do you, do you like talking about that kind of stuff like what's what's the deal with all that is what I'm asking <laughs> what's the deal what is the deal with these Vikings <laughs> <laughs> they raped and they pillaged big one you know <laughs> 
So, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I've actually never. Uh, sometimes I just start a sentence and I realise I've not got a question. What's here, but the deal with Vikings? I'm interested. To tell, tell us about you the want, Vikings. John Chatton's Viking history in a nutshell. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you if you can do it in a soundbite that could make a clip for Instagram, <laughs> absolutely. I think like this will be more factual than barrel. entertaining. No, that's fine. Listen, we're here to learn. Facts are entertaining. Cool. So Shetland was originally like Pictish. So we were whatever Scotland was in the history uh-huh. in the past. But the first evidence of human sorry, I said archaeology. The first evidence of human um I don't know how you'd say that actually. Humans. The first evidence of humans in Shetland was about four thousand BC with a midden. Midden? Uh, like a spoil heap you of remains. You can't call them that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is that? A smile of it? A spoil heap of remains. Like a midden is the name of when you like have a waste heap that you'd find in archaeological sites. Like oh. shells, bones, fragments, tools, right. burnt right. materials. It's basically like a bin. So they think there's people in Shetland before a lot of other places? Then? No. No? So we're going to have to take it. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do archaeology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 4,000 BC. Basically, there's fucking Shetland before the Vikings came. Yeah. But they were small. Like, the way you think of, like, you know, Shetland ponies are very small. Mm-hmm. Shetland oh. sheepdogs are small and coos are small. Any mammalian thing living in Shetland shrinks over time. Why is that? Because of the elements. Yeah, elements, bad mm. vegetation, rough life. Yeah, but the, the North... McEwen's. <laughs> <laughs> But beetles and insects are weirdly larger in Shetland than elsewhere in Britain. Because they don't need that sort of stuff. It's like cockroaches living in an apocalypse. Or not. So a beetle via pony in Shetland would be a much fairer fight than it would be on any <laughs> else. <laughs> <laughs> so then the Vikings came and fucked up. So, yeah, so up. basically about 700 AD, the Norse settlers started coming in. Uh-huh. And whether they ended peacefully or killed what they called the Skrallings, whoever was living there before them, the Pechts, uh-huh. or whether they interbred or did all three, the Norse settlers came in and took over. Right. And then about 1469, Princess Margaret of Norway, when Norway was by then under the crown of Denmark, was due to marry James III of Scotland, the uh-huh. one who was the one o'clock gun in Edinburgh. Right. And when they are going to get married, uh, Denmark couldn't afford the dowry, so they pledged Orkney in lieu of a dowry. For about the value of 22, 23,000 florins. Uh-huh. And Scotland said it's not enough. So then they added Shetland on to make it 30,000. <laughs> we'll, chuck, we'll chuck in Shetland, sweeten the deal. Yeah, Shetland's better Some than Some Harry Redknapp no. shit going on here. <laughs> Is Shetland bigger than Orkney? No, we're about the same size. And Orkney's got better farming land, but we're better at fishing. So It's yeah. a big rivalry. Yeah. But this is the thing, because people use, like, you're not meant to call it the Shetlands. No. Because it's just Shetland. Yeah. Shetland. But is the Orkney Islands... Plural. No, Orkneys. it's Orkney. It's just you don't Orkney. Say Orkneys. So b- basically, both is wrong if you but say. But Orkney's yeah. a very old name because it comes from like Orkneybor, which is island of the pig people. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised they're trying to get away for that. And what does yeah. Shetland mean? Well, Shetland means land of the sword, Yeltland. Mm. But um, its older name is Insacat, which means island of cats. Oh. Which is curious because there's an island in Shetland called Vela where if you put a cat on it. Will either immediately die or just swim into the sea to get away from it. <laughs> so there's one island. <laughs> Hang on, what? <laughs> no, no questions about that. Yeah, what? Yeah. It's is on. It? It's for sale right now for like one and a half million pounds. How, buy it. how, how big is this place? Some island. Vela. It's not very big. It's like maybe, maybe two miles to walk around. No, no, even it's tiny. It's a small and, island. And it is a wee island, eh? Yeah, but there's like a massive ha house on it. So how, so right, so the cats either just immediately just try and run into the sea. It's so weird. Or they, how did they just, if they don't, how did they just die? What, I don't know, they... they just die. Like it's, a, like it's a myth, but then people took cats there and the cats would just run into the sea and they'd like, oh, take the cat back then because we'd hate it. And it's what like, do you mean they it... just die? They yeah, I thought they would the only sea. have done that in the Isle of Dogs. Right. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Jesus Come on! <laughs> there is a place near here that's like a bridge where dogs commit suicide off it. It's in Dumbarton. <laughs> what? Uh, in Dumbarton, there's is a it bridge. before they go to Dumbarton, like, fuck. Yeah, fuck this, I'm jumping over. No, there, there, it's like genuine. I don't know if it's like a mirage, but they think it's not a bridge and they jump off it and then they, they kill themselves or something like that. It's, it's, a, hell. it's a thing. So maybe it's similar to the cats. Yeah, because yeah. there's also an island in Orkney where mice just will not. 
<laughs> this is great. This is the kind of shit just... that I was like getting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is. I've got so much of this. If you want ten more, absolutely. What? Teach See? us. Teach <laughs> us your ways. See Orkney. That's got the the, the bar game, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you have that? No, no we don't. What's that? What's that? It's like uh, you know how the big the whole basically the whole island play uh, uh, scrum kind of. I always thing. hear that about we like villages in England and stuff. Like, yeah, I think it kind of originated from there, maybe. Yeah, because right. it's like in, they have a critical one, and I think they've started one in um, Stromness now as well. So it's uppies versus doonies. So yeah. If you're born above a certain line, they critical you an uppie class. or you're a doonie, and then they just come together, and they just have to get the bar across a certain line. But they, yeah, they just scrum for so long, and the steam—it's on like new—it's on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Yeah, that's apparently right. the steam rises off them because they're just like standing scrum, just peeing in the street, <laughs> and it's only men allowed. Oh really? And they start. It's weird. It sounds like such a progressive game until you. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got far. <laughs> apparently, they tried to have women one time, and they're like, "We're gonna have a women's bar game." But before the women's bar game, women were like growing and sharpening their nails. Describe. This is why yeah, they don't they... get invited because they take it too far. <laughs> <laughs> women fight dirty. <laughs> so I don't know how much of that is true, but yeah, apparently the women one was like, "We've got to stop now before someone loses an eye." Fuck so it never even hell. happened. Jeez, have you ever been to Orkney? Yeah, I've been lots, but I've never been to you, the bad game. Do you like her? Do you a bit like? I do like Orkney. They've got an island called Hoy, which is really cool. I've got a... my grandpa was called Hoy. He was called Hoy. I thought he was going to at least live there. No? <laughs> Your that... grandpa was called Hoy. His second name was, was Hoy. Oh, 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 was he Fay Hoy? La, 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 la. I think his family was was at one point, but I don't know if he. It was a different grandpa. Hoy. <laughs> <laughs> Hoy. So the one Steve who has died... forty grand. The, the show. one who died in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so... His name was Elvis Hoy. Hoy, Hoy, Hoy. But yeah, uh, Hoy means high, like tall. No, he wasn't tall. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not from a tall family. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yes. Uh, I would you, fit in, you in may Shetland. Have, I know you might have originally came for Shetland. Aye, yeah, maybe. Yeah, the well, the hot Shetland eye. man. Isla Hoy. <laughs> but you're not small. You're kind of tall, aren't you? My, I've got like tall relatives on either side. My mum's Dutch. So I think I've got the Dutch gene to keep oh, us kind aye. of tall. That's how funny. did your mom end up? How did your parents get together? How did she end up meeting your dad? She's Dutch. So my uncle's a translator and he was travelling in Scotland. He ended up in Shetland, just loved it. He just loved the parties and everyone there. Aye. And my mum was on a hitchhiking holiday through Scotland. My uncle phoned her and said, you have to come to Shetland. It's amazing. Right. Because she's a nurse in Amsterdam at the time. So she went up to Shetland and went with my uncle to a regatta dance and walked into a regatta dance and this man was on stage drinking a, out of a trophy. And he put trophy doing it's my dad and they saw each other. Wow, and then and they then, bagged off. Yeah, yeah. but then, then... I, That's two... shagger stuff, isn't it? Walking at <laughs> the pub and seeing a guy drinking out a trophy. I'm having what that was one. was a trophy? I, I like to think that that was like a bit that he'd done just in case someone came in. He never won in. Just got it for Timpsons. <laughs> For the look is it? Oh, with keys. <laughs> yeah, he um had won the Dippin' Lug trophy. What's that? I Dippin' Lug. I think it might be a shelton specific boat, but it's a a kind of boat. It's a kind of boat race. I'm not even a sure boat. what a regatta regatta dance. A regatta. Is it, oh, so a regatta. Because in Shetland we have regattas, but they're not like regatta. I had a regatta like a fleece. Fleece. <laughs> <laughs> regatta. I'm kind of picturing like Civic Week vibes. Is that fair? So no. it's not in Shetland. I think doing here it's like, or like in England, it's really fancy. Right. Like people are rowing, like Oxford and. Oh, uh, like that. the boat race kind of thing. Ben Shetland's just like a piss up. Right. It's just like it's just like, but they're like but sailing. There is, a, is there a boat race? Yeah, yeah, but it's like sailing is such a part of our culture, like sailing and rowing, and because like there's houses in the middle of nowhere. Like until fairly recently, they just like travel across by water. So like sailing and rowing and going to sea and fishing is just like such a ingrained thing that like. There's so many sailing clubs and they'll have like free sailing days every week so anyone can go and learn to sail. So it's not a it's not a privileged thing, if that makes sense. Right. Like it's yeah. very open to communities. So like all yeah. sailing clubs are like, oh, Bairns can just come and sail for free every week. And if they're good, then it's like, yeah, you can go and race at the regattas. Right. It's really nice cool. and open. Yeah, when, so it's nice. We win money, win cash, cold hard cash. Win trophies and wives. <laughs> <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> but yeah, and then there's always like fishing competitions. I won one of the fishing competitions once at the Ela. Did you? That's good. Most species caught by a woman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a really drunk. Like you go out to sea and you just get really, really drunk and fish and you come back and you take all the fish up and you fry it and then you just drink more on land. 
And oh. then it's just like days. It's just really fun. It's like a is it racist of me to? I'm imagining everyone's drunk during all of the things you say. Um, <laughs> the, the, there's like like one time I was meant to be in the one of the rowing teams because they needed another person rowing, and I was waiting by the boat, and then I heard the clacks and go off at sea, and the boats were all rowing in. While I stood and land by the boat, and then the rest of the team piled over a pickup, all drunk because they'd forgotten to come for the race and started drinking <laughs> instead. But some folk are really serious, like some rowing teams. They'll not even drink during rowing season. They'll like train and train and train. All right. So it's Serious. like, it's not all, maybe because I don't really race, I'm more drinky. Because yeah. some regards will be more about sailing, but it's not at all like a fancy thing. Right. Yeah. So did your mum just decide when she was, she was traveling and she just stayed? No. So there's two versions of the story. One version of the story that dad tells is it's that he was <laughs> at the regatta dance of another wife. And he had a wife already. <laughs> oh no, sorry. Wife in Shetland just means woman. Oh right, <laughs> that is a key distinction. To <laughs> <laughs> but he won a wife and he made. And I don't her, think that's wife. sexist. Because <laughs> 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 people got mad at me before for saying wife, but it's the older word for woman before woman was made. Oh right, really? well, I guess it's more sexist to say woman in it because it's a man, a something of a man. Yeah, because wife used to just be a woman who wasn't married even. Was it? Yeah, I used to, that's what it used to be in old English. It's gone one eighty. Dad was there with another wife and then uh, another woman, and then um, <laughs> he was running her home. And just when he's in the car to drive her home, because she could drink and drive back then, um, my mom. Last week. So you don't remember a lot of that year. <laughs> <laughs> It's 2015. <laughs> um, yeah, mom just jumped in the back of the car and was like, oh, after you drop her off, you can take me home. Mm. Like, so clever. That's good. So clever. What a move. That so he had no option smooth. but to take her home second. <laughs> Manipulative. I like it. But that's, that's dad's... Mom's version is that she was there with another man. <laughs> Her husband. <laughs> and, and she went home with him and then dad liked mum, so he found out where she was staying and he drove to that house and he stormed into the kitchen and was like, you, and pointed to mum and said, you're coming home with me. And mum just looked at the man she'd originally come back to the house with and he looked scared of dad. So she's like, Pfft, and just left with dad instead. Really? <laughs> and now no one knows the story. Either way, it's toxic, really, isn't it? How your parents get to <laughs> Have you spent much time like in like the Nordic countries and stuff? Not much. I've only been to Faroe because there's that boat that ran between Shetland and Norway and Denmark and Faroe and Iceland. And I was always going to plan to go more trips, but I never got to anywhere right. but Faroe. Is so, that how long is that away? from Shetland 12 hours oh, right. or living Every, everywhere is 12 hours <laughs> yeah, <from Shetland>. no. <laughs> it's no perfectly matter. equidistant <laughs> they, just, they just turn off the clock and then turn it on again like yeah it's 12 hours it's 12 hours on. <laughs> it's one again <laughs> never go on. How, how did you find uh, so how did you find doing the competitions by the way this year the, the stand up ones particularly BBC and just obviously like, the funny women and stuff like that like was it how, how did you find it all the funny women one was a nice one to begin with because it was actually so nice yeah like it sounds cliched but we were all backstage like i hope i i just am happy for any one of us to win this <laughs> well, you genuinely were like that like all hugging each other backstage and then there's one person going like, oh, she's a fucking bitch <laughs> <laughs> Lorna. But, um, yeah so the competition was nice but i never done anything like that before i'd only ever done gong shows at rotunda yeah oh, they're horrible. different flavor yeah that's a horrible sentence, gong show at Rotunda. And I'm terrible at them. That should be called unfunny men. <laughs> <laughs> but the BBC New Comedy Award, like, that's a big deal. That must have been fun. And it's obviously on the telly now. Unfortunately, we still have just radio. Back in my day, it was just a radio and you're, you're on the TV. We're in the wireless. Uh -huh. yeah. what, was the, what was the night of the final like? It was good. It was really good. Um, I think I was more nervous at the semi final. And that was Kilmarnock, is that right? Yeah. That's why I was so nervous. Yeah, just to be in there. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's weird. I didn't keen because it all feels, it all went by fast. But I think it was nice doing the funny one. But I think the weird, one of the weirdest things about it was that um, the five I sent in to be in the competition, I wasn't allowed to do in the competition because I'd been on telly slash online before. Yeah. So before the first heat in the fringe, I didn't really read any of the emails about the competition. By the way, classic Marilyn. <laughs> but one of the great shit admin people. <laughs> <laughs> that we had to have this five minutes new material and I panicked because mm -hmm. I was like, every joke I've done in a five minute set has been online or on the, t it's all gone. 
And then Mason stage, who was doing my tacking at the fringe, and I sat doing my fringe show, and he's like, "Do this bit and this bit and this bit," and then we made a new five. So I was really nervous because I was just doing a new five at the heat that I'd never done right. before. Yeah, just but, risky. Yeah, but, but you can do online stuff, can't you? You can do stuff that's been online. It's just TV, is it not? We just worried that they would. Well, I talked to them. They're like, you can have one or two jokes. Like my first opener was I'd done before. Right. But like they're like they didn't want the whole five. Oh, right. So I just panicked. Well, I panicked. It worked too, to be honest. Steve found out that he was actually ineligible. The year he <laughs> disqualified. <laughs> he like, revoke my title <laughs> from. But yeah, so I did that, and then um, and then I thought, okay, cool. And then they asked you to send in a transcript. Did you have to send in a transcript? Yeah, yes. cringe in it. So cringe the, writing down your material. Yeah. Asked for the transcript for the semi final, and I was like, oh, cool. Do you did you record? the heat because i don't know what i said <laughs> because yeah. it was all new yeah. so oh, then right, he had yeah. to send me a copy of the heat so that i could write it up and send it back to them <laughs> <laughs> it was so you could do the same stuff that had been on in the heat and stuff. yeah so could you not just say just see as before for i don't know write a transcript just listen to that and that's what will be in it it was handy because then i knew what to say as well it's funny having to rehearse to be yourself in it I was yeah. doing, doing my show in Manchester last week, but I like can't remember it. I'm like on the train watching my own show, just like trying to cover the screen like that because people think this cunt's just watching himself <laughs> on the telly. You're laughing and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, just listen to it. Oh, but there's, oh, come on. I'm a very physical performer, you know. <laughs> you see all the nuances <laughs> of your face and stuff. Oh, <laughs> that hands. boiler suit. <laughs> Did you do the boiler suit again? Yeah, but I forgot to tell the joke about it, so it made no sense. Not like a tip. That was one of the few key jokes I forgot. But yeah. anyway, this ain't about me. And I, I hate writing transcripts as well because it's like you're writing in your shit ad libs. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's fake like mistakes you've you're made. Writing in like, yeah, like, usually that gets a cheer. <laughs> <laughs> You're dying in your ass in a fucking bit of in a word document. <laughs> oh my god, I need I do need to show you this. Uh -huh. Can I show you something? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So um the other day I downloaded an app to help me sleep. That's my friend Lorcan. Oh yeah, I forgot you And that. then um I um, can show that to the camera. Um, She's got a picture of like a hunk on her phone. I'm like, who's that? It's like just a guy she knows. It's really? not like Chris Hemsworth. It's like <laughs> Phil for the pub. It's his own Instagram photo. Is your cousin? No. <laughs> Which would be really bad because I pulled his brother. <laughs> but like we have the like the same surname on like my grandmother's side, so I had to do a bit of mental arithmetic. Um, <laughs> so what is this like visualization or something like? That? If I put him in my screensaver, I'll manage to get him into my life. I'm gonna fuck. No, Greg this Wallace. is his brother. In the back, his brother's my friend. He's gay. He's. I mean, I could try as much as I want, but right. he won't relent. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't right, with that <laughs> attitude your mum and dad would never have fucking met alright <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be here so um uh, I downloaded this app called Better Sleep has anyone ever used it no no. I've, I've got used... Sleep Cycle which I assume so. yeah, Sleep Cycle the... Cycle people Ooh. are going to start hanging with get fucking sponsors here. <laughs> okay. no, it's Better because... Sleep is here to help you yeah. <laughs> so and the reason I find it so funny is because um, it records you while you sleep and it tells you if you do certain noises Mm -hmm. oh, Does it play you snoring and stuff? Yeah, so it records. Oh. Yeah, so <laughs> really disappointed that it's not happened yet. I would have played you, but um, I've got a snoring noise. But then uh, this is the first. I'll play you this first one just to show you what it's like because it's getting it wrong for me. So this one it says there was a cat in my room, and I mean there's cats in the flat. I was like, oh, which cat came in and spoke to me in the night? I don't know if you heard that, but it's just my belly. But that's not, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the best one. The best one was... Um, Staying at mine tonight, by the way, my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, this is the freakiest one. Um, apparently, I was talking in my sleep, and I was like, oh, what was I saying? This will be funny. But, like, listen to me talking in my sleep. Are you speaking, like... Big horror movie vibes. And tongues. That's it, so it sounds like uh, Katia from Staff Let's Blast or something. <laughs> what you hurt me and you lost me. <laughs> Am I okay? What, would, do you, what were you actually saying? I, I don't know. Like I can't. That's not Shetland. Were you possessed? I have no idea, but I'm I'm fast asleep. That's like 4.49. Have you ever been on a sleepwalk or anything? Mm -hmm. Have you? Yeah. What would you do? <laughs> my my mum and dad trained me 
because I used to pee the bed a lot, that they trained me that when they go to sleep, they'd be like, okay, man, then go to the toilet again. So basically, I'd go pee before I went to sleep, and when they'd go to bed hours later, they'd say, come on, and I'd go to the toilet, and they'd go back to sleep again. So that'd be like 11 o'clock at night or something. Uh And then what happened was one time they were just talking in the kitchen, and it was quite late. And I used to watch the toilet, like, with my eyes half shut, and they said I just walked into the kitchen, and I was like, oh, what's wrong? Thinking maybe walked through feeling poorly or something. And I just got into the kitchen, climbed, like came closer and closer to them. And then just like squatted and pulled down my pants in the middle of the kitchen floor. <laughs> Literally and- <laughs> like a scene from The Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, staying at mine tonight. So. <laughs> was, this, was this 2015 as well? <laughs> That's why she doesn't remember it. Sleepwalking. <laughs> There's peeing everywhere. Wow. But my mum got me, she, mum recognised what I was doing and said she got me to the toilet in time. <laughs> but now that I'm older, I don't believe it anymore. There's yeah. no way. She's yeah. probably just trying to say, but yeah, I do like sleepwalk and talk a lot in my sleep. Have you ever sleptwalk? Uh, um, I used to, yeah. I used to do it quite a lot. Where did you get up to? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I got up to when I was asleep, <laughs> but like, I've been told I would just sort of just sit on the toilet opposite of you like just sit on the toilet not like the seat was down and just kind of just chill there for a bit and my, <laughs> mom, my mom would be like what, what are you doing and I would be like what <laughs> it's, like, it's like two in the morning why are you sitting there I'm like I don't know and then just go back to bed wow just stuff like that Aye. I've never sl- sleepwalked I don't even know if I have to be honest like because think... you're asleep yeah because you're mm. asleep how the fuck would you know no, I bet it's, you're, someone would tell you. Someone would sure. tell you. And I, I kind of vaguely think I maybe did a wee bit when I was younger, but not to the extent where it's a memory. Basically. I, I slept out a lot when we stayed in this house in Holland when I had a fever one time. Really? It was so hot that I just walked down the stairs. And I think sometimes I remember doing it, but mom said I did it every night. But one time she saw me walking up and down the stairs and she I did it for a while. She's like, okay. Uh-huh. And she got out of bed to go and fetch me. Like come back to bed, come back to bed. And when she went out to landing, like no one was there, and she looked up and down. And there's no one there, but it's a Dutch house with like three stories. Yeah. So she's like, oh, she'll be either at the top or the bottom. Mm-hmm. So she went back into the room to get dressed and going to go and fetch me, and I was sleeping at the end of her bed. The whole time. And she'd seen some little ghost girl Ugh. walking up and down the stairs. No, that's quite spooky. That's creepy. You've mm. got because you during the friend you read uh, me and Stuart's tarot cards. Yeah. I believe. that was terrifying. That was it? terrifying. You gave me a good one though because you done a quick one on me, and so I just picked one, and you're like, "Oh, that's a good one." And so, what did you get? Did it come to fruition? Uh, I think you just said things are going to go good and yeah. been all right. So I, I, don't, I don't remember that being the overriding sentiment of mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, do, you, sure. do you just remember what yours was? What was mine? Yours was really long. <laughs> <laughs> I was going through some stuff. It, it came from a place. Of, but you started from coming from a place of going through some stuff. So do you remember what? So what is it like? You flip over a card and it's like a wee guy holding some rocks. <laughs> what what was the thing you said there? Oh, because I was saying to you, like, even if you don't believe it, then you turn over a a card and it's kind of like how you react to it. So yeah. it's someone carrying a heavy weight, it's like, do you feel like you're doing too much work or not enough work? Or I reacted there? negatively to every single one of those cards. For the, the listeners as well, thing- it was like four in the morning at the fringe. <laughs> Stephen, she turns over another card of a guy in a cloak with a scythe. I'm like, I don't think this is good news, man. Yeah, father, there's only meant to be one in the deck. Um, but it was funny, but the best part was in your ones, it was like, yeah, there's serious stuff going on, but you don't seem to like, what is it? It's like, you cope with humour and then you start making jokes throughout the reading and i was like see oh, yeah. we're at the yeah. fucking see? edinburgh festival <laughs> yeah. we're doing a show every day so what there, is there a death card is there the... there is de- there's more as one that signify death but they're usually about a rebirth it's all about a journey of like finding your higher self so the death is like a necessary and good part of that process it did feel like being in therapy so you did keep scolding me for not taking it seriously and for making jokes i'm like this is the problem we used to you're not taking any of your problems seriously <laughs> stop making jokes my old career will be better that's interesting you say though it's about how people react so is there a sort of see when you're doing a tarot reading is there an interpretive aspect that you bring to it because like it could mean this depending on the person and how they react and all these sort of things. Yes, yeah, so that's why I say to fuck as well. Because I I believe it, but I say to fuck like even if you don't believe it, that's cool because it is like you can look at it as an exercise of how this triggers you or like how you feel about it. So the more you give to me, the more I can explain the meanings behind the cards that would relate to you. Uh, yeah. So I'm fa- like if someone comes away from my reading being like, yeah, that was just all like psychological. I'm like that's fair enough. If it helps you, that's all that matters. Yeah. Have you ever been into psychics and shit like that? I have when I was in Cuba. 
Cuba. I went to you a Thai You've been everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> How long's the boat to Cuba? <laughs> Twelve hours. Twelve hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking rapid this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Went through the air. <laughs> um, I thought the Sh- I thought Shetland still had an embargo with Cuba. Is that someone else? <laughs> <laughs> the Shetland missile crisis. <laughs> Fuck Orkney. <laughs> <laughs> they get fucking ponies just off the coast of Mexico. And <laughs> fucking massive Cuban ponies. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in Cuba. Yeah. I went to a reader there because they've got like different religions in Cuba. And I wish I went to one of the smaller towns because there's smaller towns from Havana where there's no Christianity. It's just like this Cuban reli- this religion. I think I'm communism. It's called. <laughs> 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 um, I kind of mind. I don't want to say too much in case I get totally wrong. But I think it's from that doesn't stop us. Okay, I yeah. think, it, but I think it's come from like roots from like African religion and beliefs right. and practices. And um, in Cuba, you'll find people who they'll be like a mix. I can't really understand. I can't really remember learning. I can't remember it. I was, I wasn't well in Cuba for like ten days. I couldn't eat food. I just Havana syndrome. I did this stupid thing. thing. Uh, it's a fake thing. Right. Well, well, it's really? just like uh, yeah. it's like deli belly. <laughs> no, it's no, it's not. It's the basically belly of all the these mind. people who work, all these people who work for the American government, CIA, and all that have been reporting that they've got Havana syndrome, where they just feel like. You know, pure depressed and weird and all that shit, but it's probably like a psychological impact of all this fucked up shit they're doing in these countries. Oh, uh, I see. Maybe I thought it was. What like were you doing over there? Drinking <laughs> the water. <laughs> drinking the water. It, and it is, gives you a sore tummy. Well, I did a really stupid thing when I wanted to have really strong gut for Cuba because apparently a lot of people, yeah, water makes you sick, and so many, like, are we can get so ill from the foods mm-hmm. so easily because we're not used to it. We don't yeah. have the right system. So I thought, oh, I'll do this thing where I'll take strong, strong probiotics. So I started this course, but I didn't read the packet. <laughs> and you're meant to start 10 days before you travel because first it strips everything out your gut and then rebuilds it. This is like what Darren did. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah the, well, you're not it? allowed to masturbate. Is <laughs> <it>? <laughs> yeah, no impure thoughts. But you probi- <laughs> so what were you taking fucking Yakult or something? No, it's like, like this extreme tablet. So it's like £10 for this one course. Uh-huh. And I started it on the flight to Cuba because I didn't read the packet I should have started it 10 days before I got on the flight right. so I started it on the flight and I just got like really bad diarrhea on the flight so it's like <laughs> oh no the airplane food and then um, when I arrived in Cuba what I didn't realize was I'd stripped my all my pro bio, my biome what would you call it uh-huh. yeah. all the bacteria all I stripped yeah. all the bacteria from my belly so I had nothing to tackle anything that entered my gut whilst I was in Cuba oh, so God. for 10 days I could only eat white rice like once every two days and if I mm. ate anything else I was really ill oh god how long were you there? Ten days. Ten days. And so, and God, did you see a psychic <laughs> while you were there? Was a... Yes, but she spoke Spanish. I can speak Spanish, and my partner at the time could speak Spanish. Right. And after we came back from Cuba, after we split up, he was like, "I may have changed some things." <gasps> so I don't know what's in store for me anymore because she told me a lot. She told me more than I wanted oh, to yeah. know. She yeah. went like really deep into my life, and I was actually saying to her, "Please stop." And then I was also like, "Please stop translating." Like you understand like, me saying, "Please stop." Your boyfriend is the best thing to ever happen to you. <laughs> Never leave him. You know? like, Always do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't cook meals, he's <laughs> not heard. <laughs> Why don't you try giving up stand up? <laughs> you can cut this out, but do you remember? You messaged me weeks after you did my tarot with a theory that you and Gareth had come up with. Yes, cards. we should. Yeah, so, um, because Gareth, do you know Gareth can read tarot cards? No. Well, can this it? was the nightmare for me because I'd forgotten about that. Well, if you can interpret it all, can can anyone not read? Them? Yeah, because he grew Gareth, up with like, his mum went to these psychic things and stuff. Right. We'll get him on. He can tell us about it. But yeah. I'd I'd gone from drinking with you, you do my cards, me being terrified, and then I was talking about it. You put a, put a photo on Twitter or something, and Gareth seen it. And I forgot that he was also into I it. And he was like, "It's not good, bro." <laughs> yeah, because it was the next day Gareth and I were doing best of Scotland, and I can't remember which one of us was drinking because we did two best of Scotland's in the fringe. One where he got really drunk, one where I got really drunk. We spent the whole night together. It was really funny. And it was one of the no- those nights, and I think it might be the one when he was drinking, and he- you'd put it on your Instagram or something, or I had, mm. and he was like, "Oh my God, Stu's cards! If you're gonna cut this out, it's because Stu's one started with like a breakup." 
That's how yeah. your card started. And that was true at the time. And then it was You basically... must have been fucking fine. You must have been like your boyfriend the interpreter. You're like, uh-huh. I know I'm going to fucking whip out. It's <laughs> pretty <laughs> fucking obvious what's happened to Stu this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so Marilyn, you've been doing online uh, a lot of the uh, Shetland word of the day. Yes. Have you got a, a Shetland word you would like to, to teach us? Can I teach you an Arcadian word? Oh, the right. You like oh, the truth to Susie Dent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I was as classy. This is a word that I've only learnt recently and I can't get over it. Uh huh. It's glap. Glap. I know what this is because oh, it was the shit. fucking word of the night last the other night when I was oh, with you. Oh, you've already learned it. So I should pick a different word. G-L- no, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Glap. G L A P. G L A A P. If I had a pound for every time I heard this word last Thursday, I think glap is like if if there's ever like a ah, it's two letters because in Shetland and I'm not sure about Orcadian as much, but in Shetland you every word tends to be quite quick. But to make it like hand, you'd have two A's. Oh, so right. glap. And what does glap mean? It's a thing. Do you want to give a clue? Can I can we no. get it? <laughs> <laughs> so is that a bobby? You're close. Oh, it's Genitalia. related to you. Boz? Is it boz? It's related to that as well. Vagina? No. That's the clip, by the way, for this week's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious. Vagina. <laughs> vagina. A vagina. I'll put a question mark in the subtitles and then I'll just have Marilyn go no. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the the perineum, the scrotum? <laughs> it's not a part. Oh, such. is it the, the bit between the ass and the ball? <laughs> that's the perineum, and no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was called the tent. <laughs> the, the tent. That's a really American word, tent. Yeah, it's in dodgeball. That's yeah. something about that. <laughs> what's, what's a British word for it? Um, there must be another one. Bars. Gooch. It's uh, the bars. <laughs> the bar. No, it goes in the bars. Ah, it's between the balls and the arse. It's the bars. Well, I fucking get it. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard of it. That's the bars. <laughs> <laughs> that wee section. It's like yeah, brunch. Means bar bar fucking ah, it's a, there's a word for it. It's a, the brunch of the ghoulies. What's the two <laughs> words put together? <laughs> it's called the perineum. <laughs> It's the gooch no. or the scrotum. What's, the, what's two words put That's together called? Heard for a while. What's two words put together <laughs> called? Oh, uh, um, <laughs> like Brangelina. Yeah. Or Brexit. Uh, Would you what is that? Brexit. Brexit. Yeah. Portmanteau. Yeah. Fuck me. I thought you were talking. Explaining the fucking pair. Bars, it's bars. It's bars and arse together, like, Stu. It looks like you're on holiday in Spain shouting at the locals trying to explain something. Bars and arse. <laughs> Full English breakfast. It's, it's breakfast and lunch together, mate. <laughs> Scottish pub, mate. For, for bars. Hang, hanging out my bars today, I need a fucking breakfast. <laughs> So, so, so as a, a glap, a bars. So it's not, so it's no. not yeah. a bars. No. <laughs> so it's a, it's not a bobby. It's not parts, but it's related. Is to it a sex oh, is it the, the hole? Is it the hole? Oh it's not, it's not a part. It's not well, a hole's not a part. It's, it's the opposite. Is it a sex yeah. act? <laughs> it's the old donut routine. Oh, is, no. is, is, is it a hole? Or? <laughs> no, but it comes from that. It comes from. It comes from. Sex act. Come? Has it come? Yeah. Yay! Got it. Come. <laughs> 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 Glap is, is that the, the worst thing that, is, that is horrible. Is Imagine being a guy sound? drunk eating yeah, a, an iced apple turnover and yeah, having that it, word thrown around. If that hits the floor, it would sound like <laughs> glap. <laughs> it depends. What's that word again? You coming on the floor, bro? And on, on, <laughs> on, on a map, yeah. yeah. Many of our words are uh, like, um, like a crump. Yeah. Is that crump. the fuck is that? Crump. Is that the bars? <laughs> the when it snaps. No, it- uh, have you ever snapped your banjo? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of folk doing it. I've, I've yeah. done it. Really? Oh, Jesus aye, aye. Christ! How was that? With that guy when you picked his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Got that much that's how we, that's how we done everything but <laughs> no I did that I used to just bleed a lot and oh, God. Oh, I hate it, you know, idea, that idea grows back and does God well, not have a show called that it grows back no like, it like it re- <laughs> it. It re- like stitches together or it just like yeah it seems to, it seems to <laughs> stitch back together it's like you know if you like cut off a pinky it's not going to grow back but yeah. that sounds like it's like yeah. a worm because <laughs> I, th- I, I think it's like if you cut yourself it would just kind of seal back together so it seals back together. But it wouldn't like. It doesn't so like your fingernail grow. grows back or some shit. Do you know what I mean? It's like something like that. Oh, I hate the thought of that. Oh, yeah. oh I God. once accidentally sliced off half my thumbnail. Did you? Oh. Making a sandwich 
I get squeamish. Sorry, maybe I shouldn't tell this whole story. Just tell it, tell it. As long as the sandwich didn't have tomato sauce in it. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly is sauce. the red liquid? Be very clear. <laughs> I hate tomatoes. Well, I never fun that bit of my thumb, so I don't know did if I it? did it. Hit oh, fuck. Or not. I would have known if I ate some of my nail, right? Yeah. But I don't really chew hard. my food, so. What you don't chew your food? Not very much, no. <laughs> I get bored, so I just want it. <laughs> 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 now this brings us on to the fact that so you you recently found that you had ADHD, <laughs> which might explain that actually. Yeah, that's true. How, were you surprised when you got the diagnosis, or did it explain things, or how did you feel when you found it? Because we um, weren't. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, because my friend was filling out a form that she might have ADHD, and she just messaged me saying, "I'm filling out a form, but every question relates to you." So I thought maybe I should get diagnosed for this. Uh-huh. And the assessment they just say like they say statements and if it's true for you most of the time you say yes if it's not you say no but the statements are things like are you often late to things like do you forget about friends birthdays and anniversaries do you forget to stay in contact with people and there's all these things that it's like yeah. if i don't have adhd i'm just a massive dickhead <laughs> 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 but yeah so when i found out i did i was like but it's also kind of a relief and it also makes you feel a bit weird because you think about all those times you're mad at yourself or hated yourself in the past or felt like you're underachieving when you're like yeah when did you do when did you do the test last september right because i remember we did that preview together in dundee we were both working on our friend shows and you were kind of thinking about making about adhd yeah that but was... your style is always kind of rambling and all over the place and that and it was kind of the perfect get to a jail card of like she's doing this preview and it's like great bits and that but you're like i'm just struggling to fit it together and you're like, oh fuck it i'll just make it about being adhd and then it's like yeah it's perfect do you know what it actually ended up being a very different show and actually like tied up to every story I told in bits when I went to the ADHD assessment every story related to the ADHD assessment that's good because Kier helped me (laughs) (laughs) but a structure and I took medication (laughs) 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 because it's the first time I've ever written a fringe show where I've actually liked it and not been like the whole fringe again it should be a lot better so you're still on do you take medication for it yeah I'm on it today so what 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 are you like without it. <laughs> Imagine saying that to someone who's depressed or something they're on they're on fucking <laughs> antidepressants. What the fuck are you like? Well, you know, I, 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 strong on antidepressants for oh, you no, I, I don't think you're I've actually thought you've like, been very chilled, Manuel. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think um maybe it's um I a lot of it's how I feel in my head because I get an idea of what is achievable in a day and what's not achievable in a day. And I think when I'm on the medication I'm like it's like time max sense and I can understand how time works better. So I'm like, oh, I can't do that. So I don't yeah. feel bad about not doing it. Yeah. Because I used to start like painting rooms at like 11 o'clock at night thinking I'd still get to bed by 12. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't have done the dishes or made my breakfast for the next day or anything. It yeah. would be mad. All right. And it's yeah. helped you with that. Because obviously like, a big thing with time is, is obviously when you're doing stand up. Like we were gigging recently and you were saying that. I think it's like, oh, I'm no good with time and it's like, hard to know when, you know, you're meant to wrap up and all that stuff. Yeah, just get me watch. <laughs> Save yourself the ball. There you go, you got yeah, one. That's yeah. a belter. Yeah, it's a good one. That's, That's a vibrating one. Yeah, but I had to turn the vibration off. Cause... That'd be really distracting if it's for like two minutes vibrating. Or Is it? Yeah, so no, just too, much, too much glap. Well, <laughs> cause, well I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because one time I was doing, the first ever time I did Best of Scotland in the Fringe, and it, I was the worst. It was horrible. It was like 2019, and it was just, the room didn't like me. And I was like doing 10 minutes at Best of Scotland. And I was like, oh, this is not going good. They're so quiet. Like, are they going to turn? Are they going to start heckling me? What's going to happen? And my watch vibrated. It's like, oh, I'm done. So I was like, I finished up my joke. I was like, thank you. Went to walk off stage. And I realized it just vibrated because it hit the hour. <laughs> and I still had five oh, minutes to go. Oh, God. So then I had to turn back around again when they're clapping. Just kept an- even. <laughs> like, Here's some more jokes because you hate me so much. There's no much. way I'd turn back. No way. No. Yeah, I should have just that. kept going. So you get glap. Is there a, 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 a word for Shetland? <laughs> We've learned that, but is there a Shetland word you'd like to? I don't think so. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I just think it would say is there a Shetland word for semen? And I don't think there is. And that's how we're laughing so much at Clap. Really? I suppose when you're on and off boats that often you don't want to be coming up with different names for semen. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Um, think of Get a Shetland word. Um, Have you got, is there a Shetland word for uh, kissing another young boy on the ass? Or? Well, it would be a smurikin. It's a kiss. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Not that exact <laughs> term. No one else has done that, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Bairns are weird. They are, they're so weird. Yes, yeah, so that would be your word, a smurikin. Smurikin? It means kiss. Just means kiss. Yeah. What's ours? 
I don't know if there's a different one for bum. There should be. A little would be Piri. Right. Piri Smirikin. A Piri Smirikin on the arse. On the Piri On the arse. <laughs> well, we've just come off speaking about your ADHD, so let's get back to <laughs> talking about your comedy. So you, you don't know the, you, you'd had that year and a half off, and then what happened? But I want to do something creative again because I just been in Shetland, stuck in a rut. So I applied to do UCB, the improv course. Yeah, mm. so I did UCB one hundred and one, and when I was in America, that is exactly when we found out that David Cameron had had sex with a pig's head. Mm. Oh. And no one in America knew. Never forget this. where you were. Yeah, well, but no one in America was, was fucking about amazing it. that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "What?" So I ended up going to open mic nights just to tell them about it, and uh-huh. that's what got me back into stand up. One just night, to, just to tell them. Yes, yeah, so it's like I'm. Like you're I'm, the town crier or something. <laughs> 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 the butterfly effect, but it's fucking a pig. <laughs> <laughs> so you get back into it in America. So you done so the upright citizen brigade. That mm-hmm. is it, which yeah. is an improv sort of That's thing cool. in America. So oh, you're over so there fun. doing that. Is that not quite hard to get into? Or no, it? it's just a one-on-one course. Right. And I really, I was thinking, my plan at that point in life is to get an old pair job in America and a visa and just go there and then do all the rest of the courses and actually try and join a troupe. And I was like, this right. is my life. I'll try and do this. I'll try and do the, like, the SNL route. This yeah. is my goal. This is my life goal. And then I get so <laughs> easily distracted because then I come <laughs> back to the UK and I started teaching improv there just so I could have fucked play with And I started playing in the military tattoo and that took me to Australia New Zealand. Wow. But on a whim, I applied to PBH in 2016 on a total whim. I was like, I'll try stand up and see what happens yeah. whilst I'm saving up for this America thing. Right. And then I just did a 16 day run just to yeah. see if I could do it or no. And I enjoyed it that much. So then, then I just kept going with stand up instead. I feel like the whole thing's been characterized by quite an, well, an openness and also a gung ho spirit of like people would have the idea. It's like, oh, maybe I'll try stand up. But they wouldn't book 16 days at the fringe and do it. And they wouldn't. Yeah. Don't go to UCB or yeah, exactly. join the military tattoo. There's loads of mad shit going on. <laughs> got a yeah. Get an ID yeah. and do it. It's yeah. cool. And so see, because you'd done like the... Because I think you told me before that obviously you'd done those fringe shows and you'd done some shows up in Shetland. How did you find the circuit when you, you came in and done it here? I was so scared because I looked at that Scotch comedy forum so much and I was like, it really fair to meet anybody because it scared me. It's awful. And I think everyone's I arguing online all the time. You Will Nami yeah. and Roscoe. Um, Me, Roscoe and Will Nami. If that's the only people you know in a circuit, <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised you ever fucking got involved. <laughs> <laughs> you were all so lovely. And then when I calmed down, it was really nice. Because also when I calmed down, it's kind of lucky because I just thought the Scotch Comedy Farm, for all its flaws, was actually quite good as well. Because it could have, if I hadn't been on that farm, I'd be like, yes, I've done fringes. But I was like, yeah, but I haven't done fives. Like, I'm completely new yeah. to this. I'm not a comedian at all. I've got no right to ask for anything more as an open spot yeah so yeah. when that i came in knowing that i just had to do all the open fives i could so that's when i moved in 2019 yeah i was just trying to get as many open spots and just do it that way yeah because that's quite a, a sometimes people do that they'll go and do the fringe like six years in a row they'll have six hours but they won't have five minutes of material and it's like it's good that you recognize that and you wanted to try and do that and you don't know until you kind of like you know you, you join like that kind of facebook group type of thing you're talking about or you go along to open mic nights and you, you sort of find out what the the circuit's like and stuff because inevitably we all go in sort of a bit oblivious to stuff and you know you got like we've when we started to, done a lot of like, like online videos and shit like that and then you're kind of going and doing the, the circuit and you don't it takes you ages to to sort of figure out even what the sort of path is and stuff like that, you know. So yeah. it's a, uh, but it's one of those things. It's it's just good to do because you just then all of a sudden you've got so many different influences and, and different types of experience that just help you get better. Basically, it's nice to practice material on people rather than like in an empty room for a year by myself. Aye, I'm just like they're like this has got to be funny. <laughs> Is that what you did? So when you're you're back home, you would just I would go to like a community hall and just sit by myself and just write. Yeah. By myself in the cold and then just practice to an empty room. And before every fringe, and I'd hire this like record shop and does like three nights in a row, invite different friends of different like ages and backgrounds and comedy styles and, and invite them to come and watch it. And then afterwards, I'd get them like bring cans, let's have a night of it. And then they'd watch me do like an hour and 20 minutes of a show. And then they'd just like be like honest and ruthless about that. That makes sense. That was good. Change that. Wow. So basically, that's, 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 that's a good way of doing it. That would terrify me yeah, though. Me too. Because yeah. how many people were in like one night? So it'd be like ten people or something. Yeah, between ten and twenty fuck would be in. 
Because it just be like a free night comedy. We'll all hang out and drink together, and then you can rip the shit out of me. And yeah. Listen. Before my yeah. first ever gig, I forgot about this. But me, I went down to my mate's house, and who came along to see me watch it, and I basically like ran my set through. It was only five minutes, obviously, it's not around twenty minutes, but I ran it through with him, and it's like it is a valuable thing. It's like hard yeah. to do, mm-hmm. but it's valuable because then you just kind of like all of a sudden you're you're living and dying on what you're saying, and you're not really like you know that you know sometimes like if you get these big laughs, it can kind of cover up certain holes in your yeah. like your act but if you're just having to do it to one person sitting there it's you know to hide, is it? nowhere to hide yeah I did so. that in front of my yeah, my girlfriend at the time before my first gig Aye. I'm amazed I ever thought that was a good idea I know <laughs> yeah that's insane that gives yeah. me the fear because yeah. Susie was saying that's what she does like, so I know like weirdly Susie people, said that as well aye. she'll do yeah. like, the whole show in her living room to like her girlfriend and a couple of pals it's Maria also Bamford. funny because you know they're not gonna well Laugh. She's usually funny. She, they probably laugh, but like you know, like when you're doing it to like a small number. So I often do routines to my brother and his wife, and I know they'll never laugh while I'm saying it, but they'll give me really good feedback. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like if we go and write together or something. You'll be having a coffee, and you, you'll do a bit to your pal, but like you never really laugh in or whatever. Yeah, like, go, oh, that's good. That's or you actually funny. Like, uh-huh. Comedians never fucking laugh. Yeah. No, come desensitized. <laughs> <laughs> need, need the sick shit. <laughs> it's like if you're at the back, if there's comedians at the back of the room and they're laughing, it can either mean you're fucking dying in your ass or you're doing really fucking good. It's yeah. never in between. Oh, and it's just a joke that no one else in the room gets. Mm. It's just for yeah, them. Yeah, just. Uh, I know what my brain always thinks it is when I'm on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I almost died one time giving a guy a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> was it anything to do with the amount of clap that he had? Or whatever? Glap. 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 Sorry, Glap. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is true. Hey. That could lead to you. So how, so how, what actually happened? Well, it was a while ago. I'm not going to make any kind of, I don't want to say, obviously I'm not going to say that name. No. But um, it was someone who I'd been hooking up with and I mind, it's like the first time we ever did anything like this. Um, because there was a time before when they invited me back to theirs for like Netflix and chill, mm. but I didn't realize what chill meant. So I just generally thought we we're gonna so you just watch Netflix. Netflix and so chill I went meant. and then just fell asleep watching Netflix. <laughs> so this is like probably you could call it his second attempt. <laughs> 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 and then I was going down on him, and um, it was just like the kind of strange because like speaking of me dying, <laughs> I thought he had maybe died because he didn't move at all. <laughs> Like, he didn't move. Like, what? rigor mortis had set in. <laughs> he could have. What do you um, mean he didn't move? It was just... He was it's like, not a glowing review, is it? Very, well, this is what I was thinking. I was like, he hates it because he's not moved. I can hear him breathing. <laughs> Did you do the old check the pulse and... <laughs> <laughs> put your fingers what? under the, the nose? <laughs> 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 uh, there's still a pulse in the bar so I still get to go <laughs> but yeah and then I was like oh he's hating it he's absolutely hating it and we're like half a minute in and with it one and he comes but I was it, gla- it glaps gla- <laughs> yeah. but I hadn't shut the back of my throat like you know you do that honestly no no you know how you can just like shut the back of your throat like this I can't see yeah like doing. and you can't breathe out your mouth you know like this Oh, yeah. yeah, you're yeah, yeah. This, is, this is our male privilege, privilege being checked. Yeah. <laughs> it must be like it must be what's it called an instinctive thing to like. Yeah, <laughs> fight or flight. <laughs> and now I can't why because he never warned me, and because he wasn't moving, given like no clue. And nowadays, maybe he was just trying to not glap. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes you just want to lie back and enjoy it. To be perfectly honest. Lie back, think of Shetland. Me <laughs> Every time. But yeah, and so I just got such a gluff because he glapped right in the back of my throat. You got a what? <laughs> a shock. A, a gluff? gluff? is a shock. <laughs> I got a gluff to glap. <laughs> That's your new French title. <laughs> Pregnant? And <laughs> but yeah, but it happened so basically <laughs> He, he glapped. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we're just, this is the norm yeah, now, just strange. glap. And um, it just hit the back of my throat and I was like, <clears throat> and I choked on it. So I pulled my head up because I was surprised. And then he glapped again, but it managed to go like right up my nostril. <laughs> <laughs> like precision. And you didn't have time to shut your nostrils off. <laughs> <laughs> again, something we've no concept yeah. of. <laughs> you know how we you know how you shut your nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> and then I couldn't breathe out my mouth through my nose. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> and you know, like whenever you 
take a pill or something, you're coming up and you're like, oh God, if I die, my parents will be so sad that this is how it works. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that feeling times a thousand because I was like, yeah. <laughs> You would Trying surely... to direct him to the baby wipes so f- f- for you. Yeah, preserve you. you surely, uh, uh, Your Honor. you would hope that he would, if you did die there, it wouldn't just leave you like that for someone to find it. Give you a wee wipe or whatever. He would do the gentlemanly thing. Be a gentleman and. It would be like tampering with the evidence. Oh, I suppose, mm-hmm. yeah. Then, would he get done for manslaughter? <laughs> I don't That's know. That's the philosophical question this week. <laughs> But yeah, I've never, I never had to choke my way out from that before. <laughs> and you survived. You'll have to tell the tale. Yep. Yeah. Look at you now, thriving. Was that in 2015? <laughs> <laughs> it actually might have. Been. <laughs> <laughs> it was the shock of that. Just <laughs> PTSD on. for the rest of the year. Jeez. I Is actually that... think you're right. Because uh, was... Netflix and chill was a term back then. Wasn't mm. it? Not here, not much you had to days. add on like a year for Shetland tickets. Yeah. yeah. Although to be honest, maybe that's why I didn't care what I meant yet. Probably isn't it the only time that somebody's, you know. Nearly died. I mean, yeah, that, maybe that's sure. happened. Somebody's got to have died during a sex Should we game. do a warning on the podcast? Because yeah. this might upset somebody. Yeah, trigger warning. <laughs> if you've ever accidentally glanced you know that... <laughs> someone's nostril. <laughs> <laughs> that is genuinely good advice for guys, though, that that is why you should probably give Warm, a bit of warning. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. yeah, so they can shut their throat like a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely never Open knew. Open the gills to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> See when something like that happens, does it kind of like put the? That's the ick into Was it. he all right about it? Was he? He was really cool. apologetic, but yeah. I, this is maybe bad to say. But I was like, I didn't really want to sleep with him. But I was that way where I was like, oh, it's going this way. I'll be quicker just to have sex and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and after that happened, I was like, I've coughed him. So oh yeah, because what happens? I coughed so much and snorted so much my nose. I am giving myself a nosebleed, <laughs> and I was like, well, I just have to go to bed now. <laughs> And that's not the first time a nosebleed has got me out of sex I didn't want to have. Wow. Really? That sounds ominous. Did yeah. someone punch you? A whole different story. No. It's, just... it's the perils it's of usually... doing everything but, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not usually blood from the nose that makes you <laughs> <laughs> prevent you from having sex. But... I don't think I've ever had a nosebleed properly. You've never had a nosebleed? I don't think so. Maybe one, but not properly. You not like a wee cut in your nose or whatever. That's, that that astounds me. There was a wee guy in my school, when we were in primary school, and uh, he was shit scared of blood. So anytime people would have a nosebleed, which did happen like a lot when you're young. Yeah, it's a wee guy thing. It's a nosebleed. wee guy hanging in it, yeah. and uh, and he, like any time he would be fucking petrified, and he would run out of the room and stuff like that. It's just like such a weird. It's basically like you with tomato sauce. <laughs> 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 have you just had a nosebleed? Yeah, I've had nosebleed. I get yeah. them all the time. I was like cauterized twice and still got them lots. I've seen you have a nosebleed. When? When I was running yours one time. Try to use Netflix and chill. That's why that's why you didn't want to say the name, was it? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, but I don't think I have, no. It no. just feels like it's running, and then you're like, oh no. Is there a trigger for you that makes it happen, or is it like... Do you know what? If you look at my nose, you can see the vest, the blood vessel, I think it's called. Oh, that's right. quite low down and just oh. there. I think I've got one of them. I sort of wondered what I was. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it's like if I'm too warm, if I've had a bad cold, I better run a bit too much. Yeah. <laughs> too excited. Just any, any time. <laughs> right now, cool. You're more likely to get them if you go to high altitudes, so maybe if you. That's why, because I'm small, <laughs> that I've never had a nose. <laughs> Can't stop Everest. Still kind of get a go. <laughs> well, listen, I guess all I was left to say then is uh, thank you very much for, for coming on, Marilyn. Cheers, Cheers Marilyn. Mario. Be- before we very wrap fun. up, um, have you got any like to plug? Oh, I'm doing. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> stop saying that one. Shut that thing off, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the Glasgow Comedy Festival. I'm doing the Stand Comedy Club on Blank. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll edit that. Here. <laughs> It'll be in March. Is it March? March the twenty third or twenty second, whatever the what, Wednesday what? is. The Wednesday. Yeah. What That's time? That's the twenty second day. Six. I'm, I'm on the same it. night. <gasps> I'll come see your show. Buy a deal where you get both our shows for yeah for the same pr- like pay, pay be individual full price yeah, yeah but yeah yeah I'm on at nine. Oh, you can finally see the show. Mm. So, so you're on at nine and you're on at what time? I think seven. I'll be. Oh, am I seven I o'clock? Know. Oh, I should know this. Cross you can go and see Stuart Marilyn oh, at the same time. Same. Well, same time. Clashed. Never saw the full versions, did we? Do you want to borrow my tie dye boiler suit? 
Well, maybe we'll talk about <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a conversation. For another but that's day. great. So yeah, same night as Stuart at the stand, twenty uh, second of March. Uh, check that out. We'll put a link in the description, stuff like that as well. And are you, I know you would obviously been doing Twitch. Are you still doing Twitch stuff? Yeah, and all so that? doing a bit more. So I'm playing a lot of GTA on Twitch right now. Aye. Yeah, nice. like Grand Theft Auto online with what other one? people. Vice City. Five. 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 Yeah. Five. I was more of a Vice City man. <laughs> well, I play like online with other Fox. So Roscoe's on it. Nice. Cycling the boots. Friend of the show. Me yeah, and other other folk are there. So I play online and I do Story Town online too, but I've not done as much that lately. Brilliant. We'll definitely check my line out on Twitch. And uh, yeah, just I guess all remains to be, be said, guys. Uh, obviously, we do obviously have our own socials as we mentioned. Stuart's on the 22nd as well. I'm on the 24th. Uh, if you like to come see us there I'm doing the Kings uh, tickets are available in the description below Stevie you still have to do now other than fucking Leicester, Leicester. <laughs> I'm doing Leicester I'm also doing uh, the Pleasants in London in March oh there you go Ooh. I've actually got some uh, extra dates uh, outside of Glasgow um, in March uh, that will be announcing shortly so keep an eye out for that but um, apart from that please just give us a, a like and subscribe on YouTube uh, do give us a 5 star review on Apple Podcasts Spotify <laughs> wherever you get those podcasts uh, this is the longest anyone's ever had their fucking thumbs up <laughs> uh, in the show and just you can follow us at SomeLapPod on Instagram TikTok and Twitter and send any emails to SomeLapPod at gmail.com we never mentioned but can this is the first these? day yeah, uh, there will be merch available very shortly we've actually just sold some at the live show and, we hope. Uh, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually recorded before. Oh, great, great, great live show, guys. Great, great Thanks very much. Thanks very much. That one person. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. no. Started getting a nosebleed in the front row. And then had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> the baby born. That was nice. That yeah. was incredible. It was Christmas fun. miracle. I can't believe you delivered it, Mark. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was mean that you got them pregnant in the first place. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of a warning. <laughs> Anyway, guys, uh, listen, thanks very much for, for tuning in, and we will speak to you very soon. Cheers, Cheers guys. guys. Thanks, Mario. Cheers, Mario. Thank me. you.